Sony is infamous for absolutely awful marketing, whether it be making terrible posters or giving away the whole film in their trailers. For example, Spider-Man Homecoming had a final US theatrical poster that looked like this, and the trailer not only gave away the main action sequence, but the consequences of the action sequence and what happens afterwards. So I pretty much told you how the film ends. And of course, there is no doubt that this trait has carried over onto their latest blockbuster, Spider-Man Far From Home. No one really wants their film spoiled for them before they see it, in general, but when it's the film that leads the biggest film franchise, the MCU, into the next phase, you shouldn't really be giving away the whole film. In this video, I will be showcasing the awful marketing for Spider-Man Far From Home. I will start with showing you the posters for this film, then showing you the trailers for this film, and I will talk about how poorly designed the posters are, or how many spoilers the trailers give away. So beware, because there will be Spider-Man Far From Home spoilers in this video. It's lucky that I care, because Sony clearly doesn't, so you're welcome. <laughs> I honestly believe that Sony just get their interns to make the posters for their films. The reason why I think this is plain and simple. They look like utter garbage. Now, the teaser poster for this film is bland while good, but pretty much all of the other ones are really bad. One of the worst ones I've seen is this one. When I first saw this on the Marvel Studios subreddit, I genuinely thought it was fan made. But no, this was made by Sony and Sony actually approved it to be published. You might be looking at this and thinking it's not that bad. Well, as someone who does photography and a bit of graphic designing, this is, as the title suggests, awful. Firstly, you can see how poorly cut out Peter is onto the photo of the Iron Man memorial, and that these photos aren't even in 4K. Secondly, and the thing that bugs me the most, is the terrible composition. Why does this fireplace <laughs> take up about 35% of the frame, because I've seen the film twice now, and it wasn't that big of a plot point. To show you how bad this poster is, when I first saw this, I actually went and made my own version of this poster, and this is what it looks like. The image quality of the pictures are quite low, as I don't have access to fully HD posters, but don't you agree that the composition is a lot better, instead of Peter being overlaid on the picture of Iron Man and a fireplace taking up most of the frame? If you're wondering how long this took me, this took me 12 minutes to make on Photoshop and four of that was the text. This means that Sony, a huge billion dollar film company, allow interns to make posters in about 15 minutes and then publish them. I'm sorry, but for a huge film, you need to have a good poster. Whether that means it's just actually good or it took longer than 15 minutes to make. Moving on to the next poster, there's this one. I can't believe this is the final US theatrical poster. This is appalling. Honestly, who gives these posters the go ahead at Sony? Is it also the intern? turns that make the posters? What's wrong with this poster, you may be asking? Well, the first thing that struck me as off about this poster is the colour slash lighting and the poor composition. The lighting on the people's faces just looks so weird because they are so poorly photoshopped on, and Tom Holland literally looks like a wax figure. They should have shopped the mask on him. Oh wait, they did for the Chinese poster. That looks way better, why isn't this the final theatrical poster? Why do they have to show Tom Holland's face? Seeing the Spider-Man mask will get more butts in seats than Tom Holland, who is only known as Spider-Man to most people. Furthermore, why does Tom Holland's hand cut off, but Sam Jackson's and Jake Gyllenhaal's don't? Why do they all come out of this spider logo that makes them look weirdly composited? In addition, why is the spider logo grey? It should be red so you can clearly see the difference between the poorly edge feathered stock photos of places. Oh wait, the Chinese poster also did that. Honestly, why isn't this the final poster internationally? Also, I find it weird how Zendaya isn't on this poster as she is a main character and the love interest of the protagonist. She was on the homecoming one when she was only a minor character but Laura Harrier wasn't and now she isn't on this one when it actually makes sense to put her there. The thing is, there is also an international version of this poster which is a lot better in terms of design and execution, but it still isn't all that great considering the lighting of the people just looks off and it isn't symmetrical. Like, why didn't they just move Zendaya to the right a bit? I'm, I'm glad Zendaya's there, poorly photoshopped or not, but still. Also, Zypher, the mix of all the elementals at the end, I'm pretty sure that's his name, 
is really poorly shocked on as he is just edge feathered onto it. I do prefer the Mysterio glyphs as opposed to the spider logo though. I also find it funny how the IMAX poster, the poster that's supposed to tell people to watch the film in beautiful IMAX, looks this ugly. Yes, Spider-Man has his mask on, but everything is just poorly thrown on there and the background looks like it was drawn by a kid with crayons. You know how I kept referring to the Chinese poster? Well, there are a lot more of them. You have these ones which Boss Logic made, which are good because they got an actual graphic designer to make them and not a random intern. This one, this really cool Japanese one, and although they aren't the best, these travel ones do have a nice art style. In addition, there is also a Far From Home poster that is a ripoff of the Homecoming teaser poster. It's good as it tells you everything you need to know about the film in a visually pleasing way, just like the Homecoming one, but that aeroplane in the background is so poorly shopped onto this. Also, there is this one, which I actually really like, but I can't help but notice how poorly photoshopped on Spider-Man is and how poorly photoshopped on that magazine is in his hands. Considering Far From Home has Mysterio in it, you can get extremely experimental with the posters and use his fishbowl as a subject, like this fan-made poster did, or considering there are so many Spider-Man suits in this film, why don't you do something cool from that, like this fan did, where he not only split Peter into the three main suits that he will be wearing in the film, as well as himself, but that also showcases the four main locations in the film. Or this cool one, which features Mysterio and Spider-Man, along with working them into drawn locations featured in the film. What I guess I'm trying to say is, Sony actually pay people to make your damn posters? Now, the first trailer for this film, I was actually surprised by how little it gave away, and after I've seen it twice, I'm quite amazed that they didn't give anything away. But then the second trailer came along and they returned to their tradition, because Sony don't know how to market a film, or give a director their own creative outlook. <coughs> Just before this starts, I want to say that I stayed away from any Far From Home trailers other than the first two, so I didn't watch any of the TV spots before the film came out, I only watched them after I saw the film when editing these two videos. Firstly, in the second trailer, I was really annoyed that they gave away that MJ knows Peter is Spider-Man. I had a feeling that MJ would find out by the end of the film, but giving it away in the trailer really annoyed me. For two reasons. The first being that it would have added another layer of depth to Zendaya's performance, and it would have been nice to watch it for a second time to see her reactions to things, to see if we perceive them differently now that we know that she knows Peter is the spider but hey ho, oh well, I guess less people will watch it a second time in the cinema to analyse Zendaya's performance, which ultimately gives Sony less money. Secondly, anyone who has even looked at a comic knows that Mysterio is a villain, so I highly doubt it was a surprise to those people. However, people who didn't know who Mysterio was quite possibly saw it coming before the film came out because of the way the trailer is edited. Mysterio shoots lasers, he explodes something, Peter takes off his glasses and says oh my god in a way that makes it seem he just discovered something. They edited it like he just discovered Mysterio is a bad guy. Why would they reveal their plot twist in the trailer? Now, moving on to the trailers that I avoided, they show off practically everything. They show off the coolest moments from the final battle, they show off the final swing, which is supposed to be a triumphant and exciting moment. They show off Peter making the new suit, they for some reason show off footage from the short film Peter's Errands, they show off a reveal of the main MacGuffin, and how Peter gives it to Beck. Pretty much. They show off all the exciting scenes that you would want to experience for the first time on a huge screen where you can be really engrossed into the film. And if that's the case, why do Sony overmarket their films? Or in terms of posters, undermarket. It's because they are scared it won't make enough money. And I'm just like, if it's got Spider-Man in the title, it's gonna make $500 million at least. Despite Spider-Verse, even though that's the best Spider-Man film, which still blows my damn mind, like why, why, why would people not go to see that? Like, it's just a Oh yeah, they also released a bunch of BTS footage, and although it's behind the scenes stuff, you can still tell what's going on, and it gives a lot of stuff away. And all of this footage of the trailers that I have showed you were released by Sony before the film came out. What I'm saying is, Sony, pay people like Boss Logic to make your posters and don't put your whole film in the trailers. When people sit down to watch the film for the first time, make them feel like it's their first time, not the fifth. Okay, that didn't really make sense, but you know what I'm trying to say. But nobody likes you.
That poster makes me so upset. <laughs> it's not even my body. I don't know why they did that. Bit cheaper, bit cheaper. You're right. Sony are freaking out right now. They're like, please stop making fun out. of the poster. I was like, well, <laughs> listen to us. The most annoying part of these horrible posters is that the concepts are just generic Hollywood concepts. And the generic Hollywood concept is... Just throw all the actors' faces on there, that will get them to watch it. Or, in Sony's case, throw Iron Man on there, then people will watch it.